Hi, welcome to Grandad Shed. Today I'm going to be looking at this toaster that doesn't work. Uh, the fault it's exhibiting is... Plug it in. And... It doesn't stay down. Also, holding it down, the elements don't get warm inside. So, let's have a look inside and see if we can see what's not working. And yes, I have already checked the fuse. To open up this model, it looks like we've got four screws in the base. And that one's not a screw head. Yeah, you won't be able to see down there probably. There, it's a special anti-take your toaster apart tool. Back in a minute. This is where one of these kits comes in quite useful. It's got obviously a sets of posies and Phillips and flats. It's also got an arrangement of some square pieces, some security slotted, which is what we're dealing with here, torques, security torques, hex and spline drives of different sizes. It's a cheap kit, you can see the uh, things are not quite centred in the hole. However, I think this is what we need. Uh, and typical just out of reach, isn't it? How far down do I need to get? Yes, it's just out of reach. So that's what you would use in a shorter situation. I'll drive a bit, with the chunk taken out the end of it. Right, off to the shed to make something. Here is a old bolt from the shed. What I'm gonna do is, on the end of it, make that. Let's see if that will work. Here is my custom security driver bit ready to go. Being plastic, it's not very tight down there, which is good.
And there we are. Turned out to be quite a good fit. And where's the other one? Don't get the screwdriver handle to undo that one. Four screws in the crumb tray. A locking tab on the underside of it. So there's a, a steel pin that goes in the top. It's got an indent. There's a barb. Okay, we are in. One opened up toaster. I have noticed this says 13 amp fuse on it. It's rather generous for a toaster, considering it is a 900 watt device. 900 into 20, 240 volts should be in the region just under four amps. I'm set up here now with the multimeter. When the leads are apart, I've got a one on the screen, shorten together, and we then get a ohmic reading. One and a half ohms for these leads. Now we can trace where the current flows through the meter. So we've got the neutral and the live on the plug and we've got the switch on the back memory with the double pole contacts. We want to see if we're getting uh, the, the live and neutral onto the element. The neutral uh, goes around through the switch and out onto the neutral of the plug. So that shows us the plug wiring contacts all the way to the elements are good. And if we repeat that for the Top side, so this wire goes around to the other side of the switch. Go to the live side of the plug. So let's check the fuse as well, if you didn't believe me. And the contacts in the switch are very good. Just trace out the elements. Back side's 20 ohms. The bridging wire costs us an ohm, down to the bottom, 45, so it's about 20 ohms per slot, so we're going to be running on about 60 ohms for the whole toaster, I reckon. No, we have nothing on this, this end element, that might be our problem. Now the way they've done their circuit board inside, it controls the hold down electromagnet with these digital control toasters. They have tapped electromagnet on the double red and the red and blue is the power feed into that circuit board. And the blue wire is attached to the live and the red wire is attached halfway down the element from what I can see. There using the element as a potential divider to get a low voltage onto the board. Now if they've gone, got three elements, not quite sure where it's tapped in there, but they could be using about a third of the mains voltage, so that would give them something like 60 volts onto their board. I've got one side of the multimeter attached to the top of the element. You can see 
that shows up on the meter. I'm just going to gently probe down each of the strings in the element. See if I can get a, a reading. Should increase by about two ohms with each line. So, where's 20 ohms with each one? I oh, said two ohms with each one. That's 16. Ah, <laughs> I think I found it. The there is actually a broken element in here. If I can get it that side. Why is it wrapping on the way down? There's, there is a, a broken element, there's a rivet in the element, which I suspect will be where the other circuit board feed is tapped into this from. That's the line above. So they've taken 10 ohms out of the stack. We just said it was 60 ohms earlier, so they've taken one sixth of the mains voltage to be their supply on the PCB. What that means if I move this to the bottom edge and go to the other side of the brake. You should be able to see something. Yes. So I found the brake. The toaster is toast. If we're going to do anything with it, we've got to get inside. Uh, these toasters are all folded tin work. And that's the heater card from the side of the toaster. And that's where our broken, sad little contact has failed. There's the break in the element. Despite not being able to repair it, I hope you've had an interesting view into the insides of a modern toaster. I do recommend looking at one of the older toasters from the 60s that is purely mechanical. There are some very nice uh, design features inside those. They don't have a circuit board or pull down switch. They rely entirely on the mechanics of the heating element. The thing to search for is Sunbeam Radiant Control. They use the weight of the toast to start the toasting mechanism and the heating element controls the timing. Um, ingenious design, presumably they patented it too well and people didn't try and copy it, uh, which was the, the downfall and why we're stuck with these electronic toasters. But in modern, modern times, you push them down, it latches together, the springs on the end squeeze together just at the bottom when the plunger hits, tensions these springs which holds the toasts the right distance apart. The electromagnet is powered from the PCB. We've seen that the circuit board uses the element to produce a lower low voltage. And the knob on the side is a just a digital controlled timer module inside on this PCB. It's not particularly interesting to look at, it's a couple of black chips. Thanks for watching.